Hello, I have a cold, and yesterday a Star Wars story, Boba Fett, was officially announced. Directed by James Mangold. I love James Mangold. I will not see this fucking film. You know, you know Boba Fett, right? That over-glorified background character who through decades of fandom has been championed into some sort of pop culture god? Yeah, him. Disney are officially running the show, and the House of Mouse, ooh, the House of Mouse needs that cheese. You know what I'm saying? So thanks merchandising, now we have a fucking Boba Fett movie coming. His 10 characters who deserve the spin off way before Boba Fett. Number one, Princess Leia, a kick-ass iconic character, a young war general, a rebellion badass and royalty. As one of the main protagonists, uh, it's kind of insulting actually that a vapid, hollow character like Boba Fett has been put before an icon. A sci-fi fucking icon. Would we have to recast? Yes, uh, I would heavily recommend it. <laughs> but especially in the wake of Carrie Fisher's tragic death in 2017, this legendary, beloved crack addict loved the idea of inspiring young girls the world over. Directed by, um... Uh, ah, uh, shit. Uh, fuck, Patty Jenkins. Number two, Django Fett. Boba Fett movie? Unacceptable. I demand a film about Boba Fett's dad. Even though it's bizarre enough that the Fett's got an origin story in the prequels already, the internet just loves these jetpack boys. I think this movie would be in the style of the horribly dull PS2 game Bounty Hunter. Daddy Fett is actually, you know, the badass one, as opposed to this glorified extra. Directing this one, I think we have... Yeah, James Marigold. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He does Boba one year, and the next year Janko. It's like poetry, it rhymes. Number three, for me, General Grievous. I gotta admit, I was a huge Star Wars fan as a kid. Even in the prequels, great characters and designs often emerged. Looking back, I actually find these detailed, lore-entrenched textbooks a lot more interesting than the actual films themselves. <laughs> Give Grievous a proper director and follow how he claimed all four of his space samurai swords. Uh, director for this is... Clint Eastwood. Maybe Mel Gibson. Really just inappropriate family viewing, please. Uh-oh, General Grievous just said a racial slur. Number four. IG-88, a Star Wars story. Maybe not the most catchy of titles. So let me tell you about this tall boy. A crazed maniac droid who programmed himself into the Death Star just so he could mildly annoy the Emperor by closing doors when he didn't want them closed. That's, <laughs> that's fucking beautiful. That's a pitch. He is by default the best Star Wars character um, and he's also the only Star Wars character, I've decided. This is directed by Edgar Wright, in my mind, only to be replaced for, by Creative Differences, uh, for Brett Ratner. Yeah, yeah, nice. Next, Rex. Captain Rex, from Star Tours. The Disney ride. Ah, uh, I'm looking at my notes. I don't think this was meant to be a joke one. A travel miniseries or a camp comedy would be perfect for this terrible, terrible travel agency. A feature length, colourful throwback to the sci-fi serial roots of Star Wars, and a great way to celebrate the zaniness of a series everybody didn't used to take so, so seriously. Directed by, uh, me. Uh, I'll, I'll take that project. Thanks, Disney. Number six, Traitor. Uh, this is just a very promising character with a lot of uh, future potential for the Star Wars franchise. <clears throat> Number six goes to a very recently introduced character. A icon embraced into the Star Wars fandom with open arms. I think there's been a big uproar for one character, and that is Holdo. Just a very popular, well-received character. You can't get five minutes on the internet without hearing some love for this pink Laura Dern girl. This one is directed by, uh, oh, Kathleen Kennedy, definitely. Just to piss off as many people as possible. Also, it's a sequel to The Last Jedi. Huh, makes you think. Wait, so people don't like Laura Dern now? Guys, guys, it's Laura Dern. 
Take your fucking anti-feminist agenda elsewhere. That's Laura fucking Dern. Nerd pop culture icon. Kathleen Kennedy, as well, is actually responsible for all of your essential childhood nostalgia. <laughs> Show some goddamn respect. SJWs in my Star Wars? Well, don't worry, super fans. This one's going back to basics. Make America great again with the Sassery Vader spin-off. Sassery Vader was from the video game. He was a... Uh, he was a scorpion who could transform into Darth Vader. I want him to have a movie. That one is directed by... Uh... David Lynch. Number 10! I'm not counting. This is definitely more than 10. I think Luke Skywalker should have a movie. Yeah, yeah, what does he get up to? What sort of adventures does he go on? I really think it's time for the Skywalkers to enter the limelight. Number 23, Ben Swolo. Um, there's a massive timeline gap in between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, and we need to explore how Ben Solo got so fucking jacked. The fandom begs to know, they demand it. That is uh, one big, puffy boy. <laughs> Coming to cinemas May the 5th. Uh, may the 5th be with you. At number 10, finally, a character whose origin remains largely unknown. George Lucas. Hmm. Yeah. And you may think, what is this? Is this a documentary? No, no, this is a fiction film crucial to the Star Wars canon. It's really the one that holds it all together. And there we go. There are the next 10 movies planned out for you, Mickey Mouse. Ultimately, any of these films listed above would be fun, especially the joke ones, especially them. But we don't need them. A Leia movie would be a distraction. A Ben Kenobi movie would be passable. But we don't need them. This series died a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs>